Hi everybody, welcome to uh, Home Recording, Home Studio Recording Demystified. Today what I'm going to be doing is getting guitar tones. So I opened Reaper, I put a track in here, I have it armed, and now what I'm going to do is go to effects. So in effects, I've got my guitar folder here, and I've got three amps. Um, I should have one more in here. Well, I have four. So um, today what I'm going to look at is the Soldano uh, by Nero. <laughs> And it looks like that. And so this is just the default setting. So when I first open it up and hit a chord, it sounds like this. And that sounds pretty killer. But um, I might want to scroll through some of the... Um, Def just some of the settings, resets. Of course, that's buried in reverb. Don't like that. Um. Now, if it's a good plugin, you will get some good sounds right off, right off the uh, get go. But I like, I don't really like a lot of mid-range. It's kind of, I don't know why, I just never have. So like, if I pile on the mid-range, it sounds more like this. Sounds like Striper. But they even use even more mid-range now. So I like to roll off some of the mid-range, add a little bass, add a little treble. Um, and then... Uh, what I like to do is look at what the amp has to offer before I look at any pedals. So um, the overdrive. I want to see what kind of sustain I can get with like just a volume swell and vibrato. Yeah, and that's kind of not giving me too much. I'll turn that overdrive up a little bit. That's a little bit better. I want that to squeal for me, so let's see what I can do to get that to squeal. Um, it's not always in the overdrive either, but that's a good place to start. All right, then I look at the reverb setting. So I just clicked on that. And so they have a noise gate here which is kind of nice but it can be kind of uh, it'll block out low low level so if you want to that's why I like to do a, a swell because um now the I'll turn the gate see the gates on so if I do a swell it I'm swelling up maybe 10 percent about 20 right now about, about 30 it comes in that's way too late that's just not acceptable um, now, if the gate's all the way off, I'm going to hear some hissing like this. Okay, and that's just a dance. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, get some squeal. would have just killed to get a tone like that. I'm not quite getting enough, so I'm going to turn the tone up a little bit on the distortion. Um, maybe play with the mix a little bit, bring that a little higher. Um, that's actually on the reverb, sorry. So. See, I want it, when I first hit a note and swell it up, I want it to be feeding back right away. Heavy. 
I'm going to bring the mix back down a little bit on it. And we have a lot of noise from the from the amps. It's a, but now let me just shut the gate off just a little bit. And that got rid of all the noise. So gate off, gate on, barely. So now I should get, I should be able to swell in pretty good. Uh, see how it's clipping a little bit? Yeah, so that's what I don't like about noise gates. I brought it, I bring it down as far as I can. Yeah, it won't let me do that. Sometimes you have to arrow through it because the knob's not precise enough. So, oh, 96. So, 96 decibels. So, I'm at 95.2. So, yeah, I, can't, I don't even like that. So, I'm going to have to leave the gate off. pretty good so I'm gonna bring the um, reverb down just a little bit more I want that vibrato to squeal this is my personal taste you know whatever you want Now, if I turn the reverb off, let's see what it sounds like. That yeah, sounds killer. Now, what I do, and I'll do this with any board, like if I'm dealing with a Helix or a uh, whatever Kemper, what I will do is I will take that preset, let me turn, and I will name it like Matt. Dry, and I will just save that preset just like that. <clears throat> now what I'll do is I'll hit the reverb. So I, I am not going to change anything; just add reverb. Then I will hit save, and I will save that as Matt Verb. So that is saved. <laughs> Now those two patches are going to be, this, I'll turn the gate on so I can talk. Those two patches are going to be like exactly the same, except for the little reverb. Then what I will do is I will take the map verb and I will add a little delay. So, and part of the reason I use the Soldano, um, the Neural Soldano, is because it has got, so far from what I've been able to get out of these plugins, it's got the best digital delay. I mean, that echo, or that delay, that's a stereo delay, you probably can't hear it go back and forth, but um, to get that kind of tone uh, bef it, during analog, you'd have to have three amplifiers. So like Brian May, when he would set up his rig, he had three amplifiers. Because when you hit something and it echoes through the same amplifier, it it gets all you know gritty and it just doesn't sound good. So like the old Brian May. Thing. That sounds great. And I all I did was engage the delay. So I can play with the mix. Um, let me crank the mix up a little bit, just kind of to see what that's gonna sound like. So this is going to take the delay and make the volume, bring the volume up. delay like that on fast notes. I like it on, you know, slow. And once I get the uh, echo kind of how I like it, I'll bring it back in the mix because I don't want it to be overbearing. Yeah, that sounds 
Sounds great. <laughs> So now this patch I will save as mat verb delay or just D-E-L. And then what I'll do is I'll turn off the reverb and I'll do, um, I'll save that as mat delay. So I'll just take out the verb, mat D-E-L, um, and then they just have the... So when I hit a note, I get goes back and forth. Reminds me of Judas Priest. Yeah, see, I never want, I, I never really want the re or the the effects to be obvious if I can help it. Uh, so I don't want the reverb so, um, so so far forward in the mix that it sounds like it has reverb on it. Uh, likewise with the delay. Okay, now that was pretty easy. Um, so... That, that's a good start. So now when I'm laying tracks, I will almost always start off with the dry, with no reverb, no delay, no anything. Um, <clears throat> because I want to get the most precise feedback that I can from my playing. And a lot of times, this is a little secret, when I'm actually recording, I will just turn the effects off. And this can be very um, weird. So... I will play, for example, if I have to do a uh, rhythm intro, um, I'll, I'll do something like this. Here we go. I'll do something like that, then I'll listen to it. into it. Oops, wrong button. Let's hit this one right here. Now it sounds like this. So uh, there you have it. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I would encourage you to get your hands on as many different types of guitar plugins that you can. Uh, you can get free demos of anything, trial periods. <clears throat> and then invest your money. Once you've downloaded them, played with them a little bit, um, I think this one was like a hundred bucks. And you think about that, to get a guitar tone like that, I would, I would challenge <clears throat> any studio to match that tone, any studio in the world. I don't care, you know, you see studios with walls of Marshalls, Randalls, Mesa boogies, just everything, you know, cabinets and plugging in and miking off and moving mics around, all of that stuff. It's going to be really tough for them to be a good plug-in now. And it's, <clears throat> I can't believe I'm saying that because just maybe, oh, 10 years ago, I don't think I could have said that. I really wasn't happy with digital plugins. I, I was miking uh, my Roland Cube, you know, it, down under a desk and put a mic in front of it um, <clears throat> or put a Marshall in the other room. But I just did not like the guitar plugins, but I do now. Anyway, this is Matt Smith with Home Studio Recording Demystified. Everybody have a great day.